Hi. Hi, Pat. How's it going? Hey, Lucy. Hi, Hi Rebecca. Hey, Mark. Hey, guys. Sorry, but I, I thought I had it set up that uh, you wouldn't need me, but oh uh, well. Um, now, let me bow out so that I leave the room open for you guys so I don't close it on accident. Just just press record. Oh, we're recording. Perfect. You are recording. The, yep. yep, you are. And I'm I'm hitting leave meeting instead of end meeting for all. You guys should be good. Feel free to call me if there's any issues. Okay. Um, do you want to uh, make one of us the host? Good idea. So that we can screen share if we want to look at a document. You are now host. Thanks for catching that, Max. Great. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thank Anything you. else? Anything else? No. I think we're good. All Thank right, you. guys. Take care. Bye. Bye. All right. Thanks. So I'm making everyone a co-host so that if for some reason um, one of us drops out, the whole meeting doesn't end. So Rebecca, I just, uh, I just, Rebecca, I, Rebecca, you're admitted twice now. Go yeah, ahead. I'm going to come in on my Mac. Okay. Hopefully. There, I'm, hang up here. Yes, yes, I know. <laughs> Is that Castro Street behind you in your, in your screen image? I don't know. It could be. It's the uh, the big ball out in front of Union Square that has. You can see the reflection of the city in it. And it. I think it was at Christmas time one year they had this. Anyway, hmm. it, no, I wasn't at Castro Street. I was at Union Square with in front of the reflective mirrored surface thing. Hmm. Huh. It looks to me like uh, it's rising up a hill with lots of little houses. Yes, it does. Yeah. I think that's the. Um, are you saying that's a Christmas ball and it's it's painted on there? No, that... I don't. It, I don't know if it's a Christmas thing. It sits in Union Square. Uh, oh, now I'm going to have to go back. I'll have to go back and take a picture. <laughs> Mission. Sorry. There we go. Well, this is going to be fascinating for anyone watching this recording of us. <laughs> oh. So I, I, I just wanted to, um, did all of you have a chance to look at Larry's um, suggestions? Um, there's some that I think are okay. I, I, I think there are some larger issues that um, I'm not so sure that I, uh, I'm, I'm keen on with the, the way he's phrased certain things. Um, do you want to? Do you want to get it up in front of us? Yeah, that would be um, that would probably be good. Um, why don't I? I can go ahead and screen share if that works. Um, yeah, I think so for everyone. And did we get uh, any notes from anybody else? I didn't see anything. I didn't see uh, any. You know, I think we, we got some verbally. Um, of course, we got some that contradict each other. So we might have to, you know, yes. this got, including from the public, right? We I think we had two or three people chime in and, and they were actually at, at odds with each other. So uh, we should think about, uh, think about that. Um, so I've pulled this up. Um, Lucy, do, since you seem keen to, to go through this, do you want to... Um, start us off and I'll just scroll down and, and we Good. can take it piece by piece. Let's uh, deal with article two. Um, Larry's um, language, of course, is taken uh, almost, is taken as a direct quote. It's not quoted, but it's the language exactly from the JPA agreement, which I have no problem including, although those concepts were included in the responsibilities section. Um, and the the initial idea behind the purpose section was that we keep it pretty broad and pretty general so that we, um, so that uh, I was less keen on this language because it's very specific as to timing. Um, certainly when we come to perform these functions, we will, the, the timing is dictated in the language that we will be doing at the previous work, year's work program um, in uh, 
it'll be done, you know, retroactively waiting for the treasurer's report, waiting for the audit. All of that is implicit in this language. But I didn't want this to be the purpose of the J, uh, of the COC because I felt that our, our language goes beyond. So these are duties, and I think the duties were included in the responsibilities. I don't particularly care to have them right up front in this section. Tell me what you guys think. I tend to agree that um, they're there and implied, um, but I don't have strong feelings one way or the other. I sort of do have strong feelings because, and I, I think I agree with you, Lucy, I'd have to ponder a little bit more, but my thinking is purpose is like your mission statement in, in a business. And your mission statement doesn't say, it normally doesn't say how and when. Mm -hmm. Normally it gives you a big why or, or what. Um, and I think saying previous year's work program is a, is a win. Meaning to, to have it in is a win. As a when. A when, a when, yes. Yeah. Yes, I, that was my, that's along the lines I was thinking. Yes, yeah, so I thought that's what you were thinking, or I thought that's what you were saying. Uh, I'm not reading your mind quite yet. <laughs> So I think I think I agree that it should be more broadly stated as to the purpose. And then if we want to include this, it should go elsewhere. Well, was, as I say, it was already put in that we can um, in one one of the sentences is exactly the same. And the other is um, the independent audit. We can make the language exactly the same, but it was the concept was still the same in the responsibility section. And as far as the uh, requirements of government code sections, blah, blah and blah, I don't think we need to put that in. It's not necessary. Well, one thing I was thinking we could do here, right, is mm -hmm. is is I tend to agree that maybe we shouldn't leave lead off with the sentence that it starts with, mm -hmm. right? But what if we put the the sentence that's left in? We put that as the first sentence, right? So it's the purpose of the committee is to oversee the work of the MWPA, provide feedback, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. right? And then. If we wanted to add in the part that 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 Larry included, I I have no problem. It's it's additional. It's additional things that we will do, right? As part of our purpose, it's neither here nor there. If if people feel like we should we should include it, here's a suggestion. I have no issue with that. But I think leading off with with the sentence of of the what, uh, as 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 Rebecca said, I think makes makes sense. So. I, I would say let's just use the second sentence, or, or I guess it's the third sentence uh, now, um, as as the first. As the first, but I I um I really don't like citing the government code sections there. It's totally unnecessary. Um, that's not our purpose. Is to is to it's not our purpose to comply with government code. Yes, incidentally, we will be complying with government code, but it's certainly not. We didn't weren't created okay. to comply with it. Um, and as far as the duties, the duties are listed. I, it seems to me by putting them up front as our purpose, it's, uh, it's, it's reducing our ambit. It's just giving us this as a, which since uh, this is going to be, I think, the issue with these bylaws um, as to whether our vision, which is a bigger vision, is really going to be, um, you know, agreed to. But I think that this really does, by putting, making it broad, general, and general, we've got a purpose that's largely stated, and then duties and responsibilities that we'll get to that absolutely includes these items. I just don't... I, in fact, I had one other suggestion which, um, which expands it even further, though I, and I wanted to run this by you, is that to say the purpose of the committee will be to oversee the work of the MWPA, which is the general purpose, provide feedback, 
and participate in should we add board of directors meeting at board of directors meetings and committee and subcommittee meetings in a voiced and non-voting capacity i did not include board of directors meetings as one of our but that might be going a step too far i don't know i have a um a kind of a combination suggestion mm -hmm. um what if we took what is that last sentence mm -hmm. and made it the first sentence because it's the most general it's the we will oversee which is what we are the oversight committee um and i don't see any problem with putting uh board of directors uh, you can you could say boards and committees you know and maybe that's not quite as we're going to be looking over your shoulder uh and then take the the sentence that larry has played with but make it read the committee will or well, among the committee's duties or in, the committee's duties will include yes um, yeah and then your original sentence. Um, um, but I like putting that last sentence first because okay, that is the most general. That's what we what we will do. Uh, so it would read almost like you had it written before, but with the two sentences uh, swapped and a little different beginning. Take out the purpose of. Uh, mm -hmm. Does that make sense? And Max, that's what you were thinking as well, right? That's but, what that's what I had suggested as well. Is is yeah. just you know it would read the purpose of the committee is to oversee the work of the MWPA, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I have no problem putting in the 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 board of directors. I think that we need to think about that. That's going to be a larger conversation, I imagine, because they don't have it in their bylaws, right? So. You know, I mean, that, you know, it's the board of directors are, you know, kind of representing elected bodies, whereas the others aren't, you know, we, we may run into some issues. I have no problem with it. I'm just saying, you know, there may be, uh, I, I'd be surprised if, if there aren't objections uh, raised to that. Um, but, right, uh, right. I, I have no problem personally, um, if, if people feel strongly about it. You can put it in there and we can be gracious with letting it be struck out. Yes, that's true. Wear our flak jackets. It's um, okay. So uh, and then so um, all right. So and we'll put in the uh, the language that Larry wants as a among its duties or my, uh, uh, um, its, duties will like, include. its duties will include or its ro its responsibilities will include. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it sounded Lucy. Um, like like you felt strongly that that middle sentence be removed which well no i would I, oh wait, hold on additionally um oh yeah 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 i yeah i don't really want the um it's actually it's a run on sentence <laughs> it will be conducted in to comply with all the requirements that's what i'm taking out but the rest of it i can keep in okay so, yeah. so in, additionally uh, the committee will conduct an independent annual order to the accounts and records of the MWPA, period. And, and Lucy, I think with all of these things that we are changing, if you can uh, write them up and then we'll take a look. Oh, of course, of course. No, we're not going to just submit the straight. Yeah. I'll, I'll send a revision to you all um, after we finished. Okay. Well, it sounds like we're 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 in agreement on that. Uh, moving to the next item, uh, Larry suggested. Um, yes. So, just as, as a little read on this, um, the models that I used actually stated they would that we would not be hiring anybody who's an employee or any public agency, department, or organization. He's modified that, um, and. Given that the next sentence already says that nobody will be hired who benefits economically in any of the proceeds, I don't see the need for the. It's actually a tougher stance to say that we will not hire anybody who's an uh, employee of a public agency, department, or organization. Though I 
don't you know? I'm not. I don't have the hugely strong feelings about this. If 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 you guys think it should be in, then it's a stronger statement not to have that. Well, let me let me see here. Uh, should be residents of Marin County or neither elect officials? Or anything. No, it, I think Larry's part is is important. Otherwise, we're not allowing employees of unrelated government entities. From well, that, right? that's the point because this is a citizens oversight committee. We don't want government people. Not that I don't have you know. Uh, a, a, a phobia, but it struck me that this was, in fact, when I was looking at the models, um, was it Tam or was it a couple of the other ones? They they had it absolutely as no government employees, um, but you know, as obviously, if they're not employees of the MWPA or an affiliated proceeds dispenser, then I guess we don't have a problem. But that's right. it. Just a, it's a conceptual difference that I wanted you guys to be aware of. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, don't... I, I feel strongly that um, that that Larry's edition should be included, right? Because you know we could have someone, you know, for example, I don't know, a year ago I was interviewed to be the communications director for the mayor of Berkeley, right? Mm -hmm. You know, totally unrelated to the MWPA, right? Um, had I gotten that job, I you know would still want to be, you know, on, on the citizens oversight, you know, like there's things that are so unrelated, you know, you could have someone who's a police officer in, or a teacher, right. Um, in, in another city, you know, um, or, or for the federal government for that matter, right. Someone could work for the regional EPA, you know. Um, so I, I, I think, I think Larry's addition is, is good. Okay. Isn't that the point? So I think I'm missing it here. Uh, by adding in Larry's recommendation, we would be saying the only thing we're worried about here is if somebody is benefiting from the parcel tax in Marin. If we don't have it in, then we're saying we won't hire anybody who's a who's a an employee of a public agency, right? Mm -hmm. That, generally speaking, in the rest of the governmental world, isn't that the way it is? If, if generally, meaning that other governmental agencies don't hire government people, is that what you're? Yeah. Well, I, I, I was just looking. Let me just see the models that I was looking at. Um, by by hire, you mean you mean a point to the yeah the OC yeah. yeah. Um, hold on. I have a I have a quick look. Um, no, I mean, I think I think it's very common for people to to serve on committees and commissions, you know, while while they're working elsewhere, right? <laughs> um. So uh, here's one: um, community oversight committee of the Measure A it says um, members may be neither elected officials of any government nor employees from any agency or organization. Oh, no, it's got that either overseas. So yeah, let's leave it in. That's one, I'm looking at another example, but I have no problem with this. Let's leave it in. Um, and I know I've lost time. Oh, here it is, okay. By leaving it in then. Yeah, oh, so you were saying that you think that that's wrong. No, well, I just wanted to read it again to say, mm -hmm. By leaving it in, we're saying uh, that we're not going to hire anybody or we're not going to appoint anybody to the committee who benefits from the proceeds of the parcel tax. And be by benefiting from the proceeds of the parcel tax, uh, you would be uh, an employee of an agency in Marin County, because that's where the money is being spent and is having, well, they have to be any agency in Marin County then because they all would benefit from, oh no. Uh, so presumably then Tiburon and Belvedere. Or, or any special district, um, right? That's not a fire district, that's a part of it, right? So someone could be, for example, an employee at 
the Marin County Office of Education or the Marin Health Board, you know, the Marin Health or, uh, you know, county, I don't know, the county, you know, you could have a, a deputy DA, right, or sheriff or, or someone at another, another agency. But not, not, any, not any member of the agency. So you couldn't have, you know, a city of Mill Valley, um, you know, police officer, for example, because they're a member agency, they somehow, you know, they. Well, I don't know. I think, yeah. Uh, they don't oversee city. Uh, if a police officer from Mill Valley, they don't oversee the dispensing of the funds, nor do they benefit beyond any other resident of Marin benefits. No, they do. They do oversee it because they. They. It's not that they don't. It's that they work for the city of Mill Valley, which oversees it. That's true. So yes, they would be excluded. So so following this. Um, line of thinking uh, an employee of the city of Nevada could serve because the city of Nevada is not a member. Correct. But, but an employee of the Nevada Fire District could not. Could not. And an employee of the city of San Rafael could not. But the city of Nevada is in the Nevada Fire District. So does that, that doesn't come into it. I think that by on a technical reading, the benefits from, of course, is is a is a tricky one, um, because particularly, I, this is I guess this is some of the thinking that just made it made me think that just no government employees at all. But I agree with Max that that might be just too much. Um, I, I think that since this is fairly standard language, overseas or benefits from the proceeds, I think that um, that would be understood that merely benefiting from it by being you know, a resident of Marin, where everybody in Marin wants to benefit from the existence of this agency and the expenditure of its funds. Um, but it's no particular uh, discretionary rights over the, the money or particular benefit as to job or program. I think I think we can leave it in. We, what we could what we could add is we could say financially benefits because that's what we mean. We don't mean benefits from overseas, you know, the house not burning down. Or right? financially, <laughs> yeah. Because we all, you know, everyone in the world benefits from the work that the NWPA is doing, right? Right, but that, that's no. what the next sentence. That's what the next sentence um, sort of says, anyway. Um, uh, I think uh, we can put financially benefits, that's fine. But then I want to always wonder if we, that's no, that's the public agency thing. All right, let's just put financially in and then that'll, that'll solve that. Um, okay, so now we do come to the, the three-year term of office. And I know that was Larry Minikis who um, had some thoughts on that. Um, did any of you have any thoughts about what he said? Well, I, you know, I, I think he was suggesting that we start off with no terms, but I think that is unrealistic that um, not that everybody would, but we just become an entrenched group of people. Um, 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 you know, I have once again got a phone call I have got to take. Let me back out for just a minute. Yeah. So, Holly, I, I who are you? Oh, dear. Do you want to mute, Pat? Do you want to mute yourself? I'll, uh, I'll mute Pat. Um, <laughs> Rebecca, were you going to say something? In general, I really, really hate, for example, our Congress that can keep staying there until the day they die. I think that invites um, bad decision making, uh, lack of creativity, no new ideas. Um, I just, I just, 
I don't think it's good for MWPA. Even though we don't have a lot of decision-making power or we, we don't have power, period. I still think it's, I think we need new blood flowing through the organization on a regular basis. I, I agree. I think that, you know, we discussed this, you know, and considered each of the possibilities, right? We, we actually did not consider no term limits, but, you know, we considered different amounts of years. And I think what, what we came up with is, is the right approach, which is, you know, we're not bumping people off immediately, right? We're allowing them to reapply. Um, you know, three years is a long time, right? You know, six years, you know, is a long, is a long time. If we allow people to serve two years and then apply for two full terms, right? If we decide that's what we want to do, they could be there for eight years, right? Um, that's how long the president of the United States is in office, right? Um, and so, you know, I think, I, th I think we, we, we struck a good, a good compromise. Um, I, I understand where Larry's coming from in terms of, you know, having that continuity at the beginning, having the same, you know, not losing half the people after a year, but I think we've built in enough safeguards that that's not going to happen, right? Um, especially if we allow people to serve two full terms, which means that the people who are only there for a year aren't getting, you know, bumped after four years. And I, I, I do think that if, if we need to re, uh, reword what we've got there to make that implicit that, yeah, you got a short first not term and then and then you get a full year and then you can be re-upped reappointed for another three years i think um, that that's in the language i don't think it needs to be reworded it's but i think max are you saying that they could be elected for another full term that's what the language says each you could have served two full terms even if your first term is only one year you can then be re-elected to a full three-year term. It's only us as the very beginning um, members that will have this oddity. Thereafter, anybody who comes on is a three-year uh, member. And my guess is not everyone's going to want to be on for seven, eight years, right? So right. You know, I think that's another reason to have terms and term limits too, is it, is it provides people a way out where they're not being, it's not disruptive of people, you know, leaving because, you know, sometimes in, in, in some things that, that there aren't terms or, or term limits or anything, people just are there and then eventually they stop participating and then they're still there and then there's kind of no, and then like people have to kick them out, you know, it kind of provides this, you know, it's good to have a, a system where people are there, they do the work, and then they move on at some point, right? Yeah. Um, uh, so I, did I, so let me see if I understood though, what I think I heard you say, Max, is where it says um, each initial term shall commence uh, in 2021, no member shall be eligible to serve for more than two full consecutive terms. Is that what you meant? Yeah, I think we should probably add the word full just to be, I didn't, Lucy's shaking her head and, and I'm just, I didn't I didn't understand what it adds but I, certainly I <laughs> what, you're, what you're saying without that full in there what I think you're saying what I think we are saying is the first of all this first for year isn't a year it's not a half a year it's not it's a nothing so we start counting in July and then that the people who get a one-year straw, when we pull straws, would their first term would would end in 2022. However, if we say November shall be eligible to serve for more than two consecutive terms, then they could come on for another three-year term. Mm -hmm. So they could end up could end up serving three years plus a one year plus the whatever this is. How, how could that be that two consecutive terms or two consecutive terms? So that the one who has a one year term 
would be would serve and then gets elected to another three year term would be a four and a half year person. Um, and then they would have used up their their terms. Um, because the first one we're saying, the one year that they start on two twenty on twenty twenty one and goes to twenty twenty two. Yeah, we're saying that's not a full term. It is a full term for the, just the initial members of this group. I understand uh, that's what you're saying. Yeah, I understand that. I think that's what you meant when you wrote this. Mm. However, that's not what Max is saying. Correct. Okay. okay. In, so tell me what the first one year is not a full term. And yeah. so therefore the person who gets that straw could serve a three year term and get appointed for a second three year term. So that person would get three plus three plus one plus a half. The person who gets the two year straw. The same. They, yeah. they would get half a year, one year, two years, three years. No, sorry, forget the one year. Half a year, two years, and three years. Three and three. And 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 just to be clear, I don't have a preference either way. I think four and a half years is is sufficient, but this was raised at our meeting. By, I, I honestly don't remember by whom someone raised it uh, as something for us to consider because they did not find the wording here to be definitive as to whether when we say two consecutive terms, if we mean two consecutive three-year terms or if we mean two consecutive terms of any length. Right. And so it, it's something we have to decide. And, you know, I agree with Lucy that it is pretty clear in terms of you know, it means terms of any length, but um, someone raised that as a question and uh, it could be interpreted a different way. So I think we should decide either way. Um, I personally don't have a preference. Um, I think it, it, it's apparent that at least one or two people on the COC envision themselves being on the COC for a long time or seeing value in, in people being on the COC for a long time. And so they may think that four and a half years isn't, isn't long enough right, that that's truly grabbing the short end of the stick. But, um, you know, so, so the question is, do we lay, allow those, those people, actually, they're not grabbing the short end of the stick, they're actually allowed to do seven and a half years, right? And if you grab the two year, then you're actually eight and a half years. Um, is, is that something we want? Or do we want the, the shorter? Um, I'm fine either way. Well, I'm in favor of the shorter, I have to say, just on the principle of new blood and, and um, you know, not atrophied, uh, not an atrophied body. Um, but that's open to discussion, I guess. What do you guys feel? I think I'm with Lucy that, but maybe that's just because of where I am in life, but uh, I just think some of these boards become, you know, too locked in and um, would rather have uh, new, uh, but I particularly think if the people who got the two year straw, that really gives them a long, long haul which seems inappropriate, but... Well, the people who got the three-year... Well, if the people who get the two-year... Yeah. Oh, I see. On the double-double in double, principle, they yeah. They get double-double plus two, where the one-year would get double-double plus one. Mm -hmm. So actually, the people who get the shorter straws get the longer time, because the people who do three years just get six years. So... There's, there's another piece here that, that we should also consider, which is um, the fact that it just says consecutive. So if someone is so valuable to the COC that the COC somehow can't function without them, right? Um, they're only off for a year. Mm -hmm. They can come back a year later if there's a spot for them. So it's just not consecutive, right? Now, some so, people are filling a void, you know, some people are filling an area, right? 
and maybe they have to wait, you know, they're, they're filling, you know, the taxpayer wrap, right. And, and then that spot's filled. So then actually it's not up the next year and maybe, maybe they have to wait longer, but you know, there's different ways people can come on. And so, you know, it's not like they have to wait necessarily a long, long time. Um, and they can come in as the public, right. Um, and, and comment on every agenda item if they want, right? And we had 50 people interested in this organization. That's pretty heavy duty interest for a public committee. And yeah. I think it expresses the interest of the county that people, this topic is big for people and they really wanna get in on it as a topic. And I think people were really, thinking about, you know, how do we maintain control of this new thing we said they could have? <laughs> In general, people don't like government. They don't like forming another agency, but they did for this one. So I think for that reason, we ought to also let people have the opportunity to apply again. Now, maybe they won't. Maybe it was a first time new thing that people were interested in. But so just, just just as a point of clarification, then are you saying then that you do want the full consecutive terms language in there, which means that the little stub end um, would be added on, or you just the two consecutive terms, in which case one of the stub end is included as one of the terms? Whichever or, version uh, of that is the one that has shorter shorter. The shorter one, which I, I think it's just con con two consecutive terms and that's it. Uh, what, and whatever length of term you initially drew, that's just luck of the draw. Yeah. Okay. So in which case I'll leave the language as is, but we can certainly relay our thinking to. And we can explain, I think, to people, to whomever that, that that means whatever length the term was, not a full three-year term. All the time or what however we need to explain that okay yeah i think we could also um this shouldn't be in the bylaws but you know it's a practical matter right um mark could ask you know does anyone have a preference as to whether they serve less than you know six years right um because there may be people who will volunteer to be at the four and a half year or five and a half year mark, or even, you know, a year and a half, and then they bump off and don't apply for a second term, in which case that may smooth things over too, where people don't have to worry about being kicked off, right? Because actually a third of the people are fine with it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I would, you know, if, if <laughs> you know, in an effort to, to, to make people happy, I'd be willing to, hey, four and a half years, like, you know, look at what's happened in the last four and a half years at any level of, of government or the world, right? I mean, it's like, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah, four and a half years. Yeah, that's, that's, that's enough or five and a half years, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for another third. So, you know, there may be maybe some, uh, some possibilities yeah. here where people don't have to worry about being kicked off. Yeah, you know, I, I think, and again, it probably doesn't have to be written into the bylaws, but uh, we should allow for volunteers to take the shorter terms. Um, um, that, you know, there may be people who are saying, hey, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. You know, I'm happy to go off or I'm going to be older than Diane Feinstein when we get through if we <laughs> hang around here long enough uh, and are willing to step off that uh, I, I might be one of those too that, uh, I uh, haven't gotten deeply into it enough to see, but but to allow for people to volunteer to get the short end of the straw. Do we want to actually write that in or should we just make that an agreement? I don't think that we, because this is such a once-off situation, yeah. we could- That's know. just a, a practical matter of, of how this is chosen initially, no, right? No. Or we could say, um, the initial committee members will draw lots to determine one, two, three years, 
all committee members may volunteer for shorter terms. We, we could put that language in. You, you could probably turn the sentence around, and I'm not seeing exactly where it is, but to say something like by lot or by choice. Uh, uh, okay, um, section to determine by lot. Well, I think that, that uh, to determine, it's a long sentence. Okay. No, I, it's, I don't want to pack it in there. But, or we could say it, alternatively, um, committee members could volunteer for shorter terms. Um, or additionally, additionally, alternatively or additionally, maybe just alternatively. Could we put a, whatever article are we in, three? Uh, put in article three um, contingency or something that says everything that has to do with this initial period of opening up business or standing up the committee, put it into one paragraph and say this paragraph will automatically explode whatever they said in Mission Impossible will disappear after the first year of business or something. It's all stuff that's not going to be applicable. Right. But it, it doesn't, it's all it says is, um, use the word for the, for the first, ter for the first terms and stick that in there. But I, there's no reason to sort of have a, uh, a sort of self-destruct language in there because it, it's quite specifically only applies right now. Okay. But I could, we could say initially to provide for staggered terms and just put the word initially in there. Um, and then um, in, um, I think that would help initially or initially for the first, for the first, uh, or it just, just, let's say initially it's simpler, it's a long sentence. And then, and then the next adding in a second sentence that says, Alternatively, or maybe we need additionally, or um, committee members may volunteer for a shorter term uh, for the for the for as their initial terms. Good, and additionally. Okay, additionally, additionally, committee members may volunteer for shorter terms. I have no problem with including that, but. Just keep in mind that, you know, I, I'm sure that if we do bylaw revisions in a year, mm. we'll, we'll be removing them uh, right. because it'll no longer be applicable, which is fine, right? And maybe there'll be different bylaw changes we'll want to make in a year based on things that happened this year, right? You know, that we learned, oh, actually, you know, we should incorporate this or that. But just keep in mind that, you know, these are the bylaws you know, for, for the COC for the future, right? And so they don't have to include everything and things that are specific, we may we may end up taking out in the future. Right, and the, but the, this sort of thing, the staggered board arrangements and at least the kickoff states uh, is almost, almost always in though, of course they cease to be relevant once the yeah. thing is up and running. And uh, it's, it's good to have um, some detail in there because if the public or you know, anyone else involved in the agency decides to take a peek at what the COC is doing, having it in one place is good, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. And yes, I mean, it's always open to amendment anyway, and certainly could be removed thereafter, but it's, I don't see, I see it as sort of harmless and quite specific as to the way it works for now. Um, so are we moving on? Um, all right, so, um, by the way, I would like to which two and three, the order of two and three. Yes, I was actually yeah. going to mention that. Yeah. I also think we need to change the wording of what is currently two. Um, okay. Uh, and because it seems to imply, I mean, I mean, it says as appropriate at the end, but it seems to imply everyone is attending all of those meetings, which if I was thinking about joining the COC in the future, right? And I read the bylaws to see what the responsibilities were. I would be like, oh my gosh, I have to attend all these meetings in the middle of the day. There's no way, right? And that's what so the as appropriate yeah. supposed to designate, but it's not clear enough. <clears throat> I agree. It, yeah, because it's it and it's not even as appropriate. It's more that I'm gonna go to one and you're gonna go to, you know, I'm gonna go to the um, operations and you're gonna go to the board, right? 
as designated, as selected. Uh, I think we're all choosing, so attend selected meetings of. As, um, or represent. Uh, and you represent the COC, represent the committee. Uh, instead of attend meetings, represent uh, represent the, uh, the subcommittee responsible. But um, it's, we still want them to attend the meetings, though. Um, so attend meetings um, well, as, as just to eliminate the whole the whole thing because it's our subcommittees aside from the bylaws subcommittee are tasked with reviewing and representing on those. Um, well, we actually don't have a subcommittees. Oh, we do. Hold on. Subcommittees will be created to monitor the meetings of. Uh, yeah. All right. So I'll take it up. Yeah. I'm happy with that. And then we don't have to switch two and three. <laughs> Re Rebecca, is that okay with you? <laughs> I think so. Okay. I'm it, not exactly sure. Okay. I, really yeah. I think one of the responsibilities. The the, sorry, Rebecca. No, we're good. Okay. Uh, I guess one of the things is just thinking out loud is that if somebody's on a subcommittee but fails to sit in on that subcommittee's meetings they're not then they're, they're neglecting to meet their responsibilities um no they're not because there could be someone who volunteers for no subcommittee and that would be okay theoretically mm -hmm. i mean it no. does serve on subcommittees but if you don't volunteer from them that's that's okay now everyone is very eager to be involved that's why we all volunteered for the coc but you know there could be a time you know when someone you know, where, where there's less subcommittees, right? Or there's less interest, you know? And yeah, I, th I think, sir, I think the way it's worded is good. Okay. I, I don't think it's okay if people don't serve on sub on committees or subcommittees. No, they are going to be required to serve on subcommittees of the committee. But for instance, say, I think Max is saying that if, if it's like this committee, so if you've volunteered to serve on the ad hoc bylaws committee, then you've served on a com committee, of, a subcommittee of the committee. That you don't necessarily have to sit on the subcommittee that reviews the board, correct? Or yeah. Ops committee, as long as you are in some way participating. But I, I guess what I was thinking about even was a kind of dereliction beyond that, which is whatever committee subcommittee you've agreed to sit on. You fail to ever show up at any of those meetings. You you're not meeting your responsibilities as a member, um, and that's why I had the number two in, because if you are on that subcommittee and you never show up, then I guess that's a, a problem. But maybe we're over elaborating. To me, that's implied by serve, mm -hmm. right? Like to serve means you're actually serving on it. You're not just in name only. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could say serve and participate, something like that, um, or actively participate. You know, it just depends how how much, you know. Well, okay, I, I, I let's take out two and, and just leave three as it is. I always prefer simpler bylaws than overly elaborate, uh, elaborated ones. So I think it yeah. implies service means actually performing the duties of. Um, um, are we saying someplace else? Mm -hmm. Where? Oh. That we do have responsibility for going to other meetings and observing them. Then Article uh, uh, 6, 7 says subcommittees will be created to monitor the meetings of the Board of Directors, Operations Committee, and Advisory Technical Committee of the MWPAA and their respective subcommittees to monitor we could say to monitor and participate in would that would that um would that be more does that help um monitor is fine okay monitor yeah so subcommittees will be created to monitor the meetings of and their respective subcommittees 
now, so I'm not sure that that's enough about what I'm thinking. This says that subcommittees are gonna be formed or which might be a person or two to go off and monitor those meetings. What we are saying right now only in article two, sorry, article four about members responsibilities. That's where it says, I have a responsibility to go attend a meeting. I'm, I'm gonna be assigned as part of my responsibility as a member of the COC. I'm gonna be assigned or I'm gonna select a committee to go monitor. So yeah, that, that is back to the, the derelict um, committee member, the one who signs up for a, a thing and doesn't show up. But, um, or doesn't even volunteer to go to a meeting. So uh, you mean it doesn't volunteer for any of those subcommittees? It just, I, I, you know, I once served on the bylaws subcommittee and now I've done my bit for the rest of the, the, the six years I sit on the COC. Yeah. Well, I think it's two things, right? I think that we have in Article 4 here, we have serve on subcommittees of the committee, right? Yes, and then, of our committee. Of our committee. And yeah. then if we go down to Article 7, it defines what that means, right? And I think that we do need to maybe add in a little bit. For example, um, we mentioned partnership meetings up here, but we don't. You know, we mentioned partnership entities, but we don't mention that. Uh, we don't mention that in Article Seven, so we may want to add that. We may want to say attend meetings, right? Um, to mon to attend meetings uh, and monitor. We may want to say something about setting up ad hoc committees, for example, like this bylaws committee. You know, we may we may have some. Um. Uh, yeah, sub, sub, how about um, subcommittees uh, can be created to perform any functions of the committee? Um, standing subcommittees will consist of. So I don't have a problem with any of that. I, I actually don't have a problem with the way it's worded right now in Article 7. My distinction is if you leave the related uh, item in article four, which is number two, it's related. It's not the same. Article seven is creating the committees to go do the work. Article four is as a member of the committee, my responsibility, which is to attend maybe meetings of not even COC. I mean, yes, meetings of COC. I have, as part of my responsibility as a member of the COC, I'm going to be asked to attend and monitor meetings of other committees. That's part of the oversight that we're going to be doing as members of the COC. But only, only the committee... It, you're only monitoring the ones for the subcommittees that you're on. I mean, obviously you can attend as many as you want, right? So like I'm on the operations committee, so I'll attend the operations committee every month. Yes. But I'm not gonna attend the finance committee because I know that that Larry and Kingston are gonna attend the finance, yes. right? Yes. So how about adding the words as assigned instead of as appropriate? I think as assigned is good. I'm, so you, when you're volunteering for a committee, you're assigning yourself to that committee yeah, and, and that subcommittee. So as assigned yeah. indicates, you obviously you have, as the more responsibility to, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. We go monitor meetings. But, but isn't that the same as serving on a subcommittee? I mean, isn't it, in my mind, number two should be under subcommittees because that's what the subcommittees does, what the committee members responsibility is is to serve on a subcommittee okay and then so you would oh. I, 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 and max and i are on the same page i i think number two is redundant because you 
talk about it, um, you know, in a later portion in Article 7. So why do we need it here? You serve on subcommittees of the committee as assigned. Um, so I, so then if Pat and I volunteered to monitor, I forget what we're monitoring. So if, if we said we were gonna go monitor uh, the- Executive committee. Executive committee. Then Pat and I are a subcommittee. Correct. That's, that's what you signed up for, yeah. That's the subcommittee we signed up for. Now, in Article 4, Number three says serve on subcommittees. That's where the obligation to serve on a committee of some sort. Okay, I'm okay, fine. You can get but rid of number two. Do we want to say serve and actively participate then on subcommittees? Um, as opposed to which would then be the person who never shows up? Yes. Uh, well, well, I think we define that in Article 7. Um, perform I, some of the duties. I, I, I like where you're getting at, Lucy, but I think it's uh, Article 7 where we put that in because well, that's where we define what serving on a subcommittee means. At the moment, I agree we don't we don't really define it, but I think this is the spot to define it is, is Article 7. Well, Rebecca's point was that there is the existence of the subcommittees and then there's the responsibilities of the members and the two are slightly different. But we could, and it's implied that, I get it, so that it's implied by serving on the subcommittees and then the, but it doesn't, are you suggesting expanding the definition in this Article 7 to include the actual conduct of the members on the subcommittees? I, I would suggest that in Article 7, you expand it just a little bit beyond because right now, as it reads, you're just you you just you would um, let me you would you, you for example, this committee wouldn't count because you're mm -hmm. only talking about the little subcommittees that are monitoring all those, but you could have. So another paragraph that talks about other needed subcommittees. Um, and then, then we can clean this one up. And to Rebecca's, or to both of the, to me, to serve is to be active. You know, you can't serve, serving on a committee is to actively participate in it. It's not the very word serve means something more than just show up. It means at the very least show up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm totally happy with serve, but if, if other people prefer serve and actively participate on subcommittees, then that's fine. So the definition of serve, perform duties or services for another. So actually perform, perform is the key. I think that's, I think Pat's right. Okay, I think it's a leave serve on subcommittees of the committee and leave it at that. Yeah, and take out two. I think okay. you get rid of number two. It's okay the way it is. Okay. As long as we, if, if anybody says anything, we can define what we mean by serve. It's, okay. It's more than just sit there. Um, okay, report to the public and the MWP on the spending emergency parcel tax funds. And that is, of course, the language that Larry wants in um, the purpose. Um, and he wants slightly different language um, that I'm okay with the um, his review, uh, revision of item six seems not a problem. Um, but to move ahead, I do have, um, I don't know if you're quite strong. I just have one, one, one other item here on uh, Article 4. Four. Um, yeah, so number um, number four, 
uh, where it's re review and comment on detailed project and program work plans. Um, I was thinking in, in an effort to, to be more broad as, 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 as Lucy has encouraged us to be, and also to kind of split the difference between the two members of the public who commented, um, uh, Fern and then uh, Bell Cole, um, was, you know, one, one said, you know, we shouldn't comment on detailed project work plans. And then the other one said we should. Um, and so I was thinking, what if we just eliminated detailed project and program? So it just said review and comment on work plans or on MWA, MWPA work plans, and then just, just left it. Uh, pro pro project and work plans or just work plans? Just work plans, any, any work plan of the MWPA but there could be other things that are projects of the MWPA that aren't specifically a work plan. Well, they all have to be in the work plan. The way I read this is it means comment on detailed project work plans, right? And program work plans. Mm -hmm. Or did you think it meant detailed well, projects? I'm hypothesizing here. So suppose, suppose okay. the, the MWPA decided to spend half its money on public education, um, which is not a sort of a work plan. I guess it would be a work plan. It, you know, they would be putting out features or videos or pamphlets or something. And if you if you look at it, there's a work plan. It's mm -hmm. got everything in it. Yeah. Okay. So let's say review and comment on work plans and just everything yeah. else. Like. Okay. MWPA work plans or agency work plans or just work plans, whatever you think the Okay, on uh, right. I, just, I, I just say eight on work plans. Okay. Right. Um, number six, I don't like uh, what Larry's implying there. Um, it, if I'm reading what he's got, mm -hmm. it means we're going to get the stuff that goes to the auditor in raw form, Aud meaning we're going to get the books, we're not going to get the pretty pamphlet that the auditor creates with the language in it explaining everything. I don't know that I could do anything with a set of books. Um, well, that's, this is where we kind of don't know what, what an audit means. Well, but, but I mean, if you read number six, yeah, the way Larry has worded it is review the books mm -hmm. and records of the MWPA as submitted for the annual audit. Doesn't well, that mean as they are submitting it to the auditor? I think it does because otherwise, how do we approve an audit if we f feel that, for instance, they were submitted with a bunch of records and the audit doesn't reflect those records? But uh, I mean, do you want all the books and raw information uh, as it's presented to the auditor, or do you want the document that the auditor creates that explains what's in the, the financial report? Can we approve an auditor's report when it looks pretty nice and finished if we feel it doesn't reflect what the agency actually did? How would we check that? You'd have to have looked at the, what was submitted to, I mean, this is what I mean about none of us, maybe Larry does know, but we don't. Um, yeah. I you have to have a Larry Chu on the committee every year if you were gonna do that. Yeah. Sorry. Well, I, I think that's why you have a cost representative or a taxpayer representative, because I, I think we're talking about two, two different possible problems, one, the audit is fine, but we know the money was spent on things that were not uh, in the mission of the organization. Or the other one is the audit isn't fairly reflecting what was actually done. The, for the second one, you need a Larry Chu to be able to look at the raw data to see that it is correct in the in the audit for the the first one you need us to 
say, hey, you know, are neighborhood response groups really appropriate way to spend uh, the money given that they are not necessarily related to fire? So, so does know. that mean the, the language as it was originally written is broad enough to encompass both of those uh, as opposed to Larry's change, which is simply a reference to the second one? Well, maybe not, because initially it said review and approve the annual official audit. That's after the audit's been done and we're looking at the auditor's version, which, which may or may not replace everything we need to look at. Um, the auditor that, just, that's in our mandate that we, after the audit has been done, we do have to, and this is where I keep returning to this amb ambiguous term, we have to adopt, and I still don't really understand what that means, um, the auditor's report. Now, I think that means that we have to write and adopt a report ourselves. We don't have to adopt the auditor's report. Oh, okay. To me, the wording is ambiguous, but I have always taken it to mean that once we get that audit, we write and then adopt a report, and hopefully the report will say, great job, group. You know, this followed the mission of the organization, the public will be very happy with you. Uh, you know, alternatively, it might say, well, 90% of this was as it should be, but here are a few things. And that's why, to me, we need to have the active role as we go along, because we don't want to be negative after the fact. We want to be able to encourage proper behavior all what? along. Well, I adopt their own report. Well, uh, one, 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 mean... one piece in here that that I think we're we're overlooking is that um, in Larry's suggestion, the words and approve the annual official audit uh, is removed. So we may want to, if if that is in fact a responsibility of ours that we want to highlight, right? We should put in adopt. You know that we're going to adopt the audit, um, whether that's whether you know the auditor's report whether that's in in number six or whether it's a new number seven we could we could do that i'm still unclear what that actually means but um because yeah. otherwise if 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 we take, take larry's suggestion entirely right then it has nothing about us approving it and all we have to do is review it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll create a, a 6.5, um, which will be a, a approve and adopt the uh, the audit. I think approve and adopt are synonymous mm -hmm. with each other, but, but one, one or the other, yeah. Okay. Um, then I'll, I'll put approve because I'm more comfortable with approve of what, what that means. Yeah. So are we saying we're going to review the books and records of the MWPA as submitted for the annual audit mm -hmm. and, and then, or semicolon. Then we're going to also adopt the uh, annual audit. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm, what, I'm, appro I'm preferring the word approve, um, but saying approve the annual audit approve as well. Approve the annual audit. Yeah, so I'm, I'm putting in an extra little section in that little item. Um, and then so do we want to leave um, Larry's language in, meaning that we will do both the, the, the stuff that's submitted and then meaning the second one is we will approve the output. So we leave Larry's language in, is that what? I would. Saying? I think for now, leave it in, okay. but make it a topic of discussion to make sure that we, that so we need I want to make sure that what I interpreted it to mean is what Larry meant and to say, okay, what if we don't have Larry Chu or, you know, somebody who can go through the books and look at them and understand what's there or not there. I mean, I probably could after a couple of weeks. I thought we were going to say after a couple of drinks, but. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. But I don't drink, so it wouldn't help.
<laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's uh, some tea or something. <laughs> I have my uh, my my tea here. You know. Um. Okay, um, and then perform such other duties, evaluate and choose candidates. We've already discussed that. Yeah. Um, and I think that everybody was okay with that. I can't remember. Did we? Yeah, was... we, we discussed it. Um, yeah. there, there was a discussion about it and questions raised. And I think where we landed was everyone kind of came where, where we came out. Um, okay. I was thinking um, rather than choose, mm -hmm. you might say recommend. Um, cause we're not choosing, we're recommend, cause it has to be approved, right. By the MWPA. Right. But I would, maybe I, if you prefer the word select, but I would say, say, um, say we have three excellent candidates that we think would be perfect for the next coming year, but the broad want, board wanted three completely unheard of people that we've never heard of. Um, so we, if we've, chosen or selected the candidates that we think are the appropriate ones and the board chooses not to um, approve them we then would go out and we would select three more candidates is what what that I was I like the word select okay yeah. select. all right yeah choose just has is there something maybe it's just me but it seems very definitive right okay so select uh, is select is we'll do it. okay that's good. right now, which brings me to the next section, which I am um, completely unhappy with the authority and limitations section. Um, um, first of all, uh, and I think this is something that we've had in mind for a long time, is that the committee shall only have advisory powers. That, In fact, of course, it is true that ultimately we can only advise because we have no in, intrinsic authority beyond what's in our control. Um, but to actually state it in there, because we've always said we're an oversight committee, not an advisory committee, and we want to make that distinction, I think that's giving away something that we don't need to give away. Um, it's implied, it's implicit in our role, but it's not. let's not make it explicit. Um, and, uh, and item two is, uh, I think, um, quite specifically the area that we would like to make sure that we do have the authority to communicate externally, um, obviously, you know, we, I mean, I think he, what he's worried about is that we're going to go rogue. But let let's p posit the very worst case scenario where we feel that the entire MWPA, as it's operating, is totally corrupt, and that um, we could and should then issue communicate to the public and say, you know, uh, it is an outrageous, uh, you know. Uh, example, but I'm trying to get at the fact that we need this independent power, um, and um, so I, I, I'm very, I, I, I very much do not want to put in either items one or two. Do if, you guys see agree? If we had problem, if we thought the whole entire board, mm -hmm. or or maybe it's a, a, a quorum of the board uh, was corrupt. Mm -hmm. Who would we go to? The public. All we could do is go to the public. I mean, we could go to the rest of the board, but assuming that, you know, this was you scratch my back, I scratch yours kind of arrangement, then we have to be able to say, well, we could go to the public. Well, and we'd also could go to the member agencies, right? So, you know, the, yeah, board, don't forget, don't the forget. city of San Rafael sends a rep, the Nevada, you know, fire district sends a rep, the city of Mill Valley sends a rep, Southern Marin Fire, right? So we'd go to each individual board and we'd say, hey, you know, your representative from such and such, you know, you know, body that you sit on, right? You know, you're sending this person and they're actually, you know, involved in X, Y, and Z terrible things, right? Um, I, I think that, you know, what Larry's getting at here, right, is, not those extreme yeah. parts, but more of, you know, kind of a routine communications, right? So, you know, one day someone might say, oh, the COC should have a Facebook page, right? Or a Twitter page. And, and that sounds like, oh my gosh, why in the world would we do that? Right. But, you know, I'm on the emergency preparedness commission for the city of Mill Valley. And we always understood we were not allowed to have a Facebook page. But then we discovered that the arts commission about two months ago, has had a Facebook page for a long time. 
Mm -hmm. And we said, well, why don't we have a Facebook page? And we didn't really get a, uh, an answer. And then we got an answer. Oh, sure. Go ahead, create one. So now we have one, right? And we're communicating externally without going through the city of Mill Valley at all, right? Um, and so someone may one day have that idea at the COC. And I think that, you know, Larry's point is well taken where I don't think that's the COC's role to be doing regular communications that's in conflict with the MWPA. That said, in that extreme case, like we do want, you know, we want some ability to go to the Marin IJ or, mm -hmm. you know, whatnot and say, hey, you know, this is, this is happening. So I don't know where that balance is or if I'm making any sense, but it's, it's somewhere between never and, oh, we can go and do lots of external communication all the time, right? And there's another situation that we might wanna be able to go to have external. And that is to say, we reviewed the finances and work plans of the MWPA this last year. And we just wanna let you guys all know public they're doing a very fine job and are spending your money like this. And it's really good. I just, uh, I, 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 I take your point, Max, that there is, you know, um, I, I don't see any reason for this to be in the bylaws. Uh, if, if the board, if the COC wants to adopt a policy that we do not have a Facebook page or, uh, but I don't see any reason to limit it here. Uh, that's, um, is this a standard feature of, of, of bylaws to have authority and limitations? No, it's not. No. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't personally have a problem with either one of those, but I don't know that they need to be in the bylaws. To me, it's, it's a given that we're advisory. You know, nobody has ever said that we have any power beyond being advisory. Uh, the second one is a little bit more problematic that I think guarding against rogue individuals. Um, but um, uh, I just, I don't know why they belong, belong in the bylaws. As far as the rogue individuals go, we've already got a provision in here that no, no one shall communicate on part of the COC without, um, without the uh, authorization of the, of the COC. So one person cannot go off and do that. Um, as far as um, the, uh, our powers only being advisory, that's absolutely true and it's implicit in our role. But the one piece of power that makes, that, that gives, us, uh, of, gives us our voice is our ability to communicate. So to, to sort of to hobble that and to, or to muzzle that is to is to actually say well we're we're essentially a, a toothless and and um, a, a toothless watchdog we can't talk out of turn and we can't uh, we can't say anything and they're perfectly free to ignore us yes they're perfectly free to ignore us but if they do ignore us and it's an important enough issue we can speak okay so do we agree not not to have that. Sentence that those authority and limitation section. Yay or nay? I'm taking it out. I I I <laughs> I think this will be a conversation with the wider with the wider group. I think our recommendation can be that it's it's not needed, right? It sounds like all of us are in agreement that it's not needed, even if I think Pat and I are okay with it being in, but you know, recognize that maybe it's not needed. Um, Lucy, it sounds like you're very strongly saying you don't want it at all. Um, I'm sorry, Rebecca, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't catch how you think. So I think that we, we maybe we say, you know, let's, it, it's not necessary. And then if someone feels like it's really necessary, very important, then maybe we have a vote as the COC and people can vote how they, how they wish. Well, this sort of is the nub of the matter as to defining who we are and what our roles are. Um, and, um, and I didn't pick up from the general committee that that they are in favor of limiting our role, that they were in agreement with us as we put it out last time that we was, we saw us, ourselves having a larger role. Um, and I think to the extent we see ourselves doing that, this is an absolute um, 
shooting ourselves in the foot to have this section in. So if we have a discussion about this it, with the COC and it comes down to a vote, it will be essentially a vote on the entire role and function of our of our watchdog role. I mean, it would be sort of key to... Uh, it's. I, I don't see it as just a sort of an incidental piece of language. I see it as sort of intrinsic to what we're doing or intrinsically dangerous to what we're doing. I do think it's interesting that it's Larry who's bringing this up and I'm not clear on why and I wasn't when he was talking about it in our meeting either because he's one of the ones I believe when we were first talking about having a broader role who was saying yeah that having a broader role might be a good thing or is a good thing. Maybe I misunderstood the first conversation around broader role. Yeah, it, it would be interesting to know why he thinks it's important to be in there. Yeah. So I, I do think taking it out would be better. So oh, I, and just, just to go back to one of the items that, and I think, I, who was it who, a member of the public who talked to, uh, there was Bell, Bell Cole who said, I'm sure, not sure you guys, you want to get bogged down in the details of anything. And so why would you want to have to review and comment work on work plans? And then there was the other person, and I can't remember who it was, who yeah, said, from Thomas yeah. spoke, I think. and do you remember her name? Um, who said, I think you should actually have findings and recommendations. I think you should actually have analysis and recommendations, which I, I actually kind of like. I like it. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I so maybe I we, that was, uh, who so was it? there was somebody else. Was there somebody else besides Bell Cole and Terry Thomas? Or is it Terry Thomas who was, was the. Terry Thomas. I think it was Terry Thomas who suggested um, giving ourselves actually analysis and not just comment, but analysis and recommendations. I, I think it's implicit in review and comment. We could, it could take the form any form that we saw fit which to analyze and make recommendations or just to say, um, you know, description or whatever. But, but I thought of it, along the grand jury structure model, that's what the grand jury does. It has findings and recommendations. Um, but, you know, I, I just wanted to revisit that very quickly with you guys, see if you had any, I, perhaps it's leave it, it's more neutral, just review and comment and not, you know, not go into further detail. I, I I think it's it's fine how we are. I mean, I think that, you know, Bell's worried we're going to be very, very, you know, hyper-focused on the detail. You know, Terry, you know, analysis, it wants to make sure that we are analyzing things. I think the way we've, we've put it, actually, I don't think we're going to be hyper-focused on every little detail and be extremely nitpicky. And I also don't know that we're not going to, you know, Look at our role as more broad and and analyze if if needed, right? I mean, I think, you know, we're 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 all busy people. We're not going to you know turn this into our our full time job and 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 be you know micromanaging anyone. We're also not going to, you know, be derelict from our duty and and not be engaged. You know, I think I think we struck the right balance. All right. Um, so let's move on to um, Larry's conduct. Um, I I do find this very I, I, this isn't standard this, uh, this this these subsections as he put in um, I, I of course I agree that nobody should misrepresent the scope of their influence or authority um, I, I did see that in one, some one or more of the documents that you did accent yeah I, I remember reading a thing like this uh, I I don't. I don't have, you know, I think it's, of course, that this is the case, but I don't understand why it would, we should bother to put it in um, as until such time as formal action. Has been, uh, until such time as formal action has been taken by the authority, this specifically leaves us in the reactive role rather than the proactive role. Mm, no, because it's saying that if something isn't decided, right, that we're not pretending it has been decided, which, which is a little bit different than being proactive within the NWPA, but we're not going to, you know, represent, 
Hmm. Or represent recommendations of the committee. As MWP. PA policy until such time, which is interesting because recommendations of the committee are never, uh, uh, it's suggesting that somehow what we recommend would become policy. Um, I don't, I just see, see it as uh, unnecessary. I mean, as far as communications go, we have authorized communications only. So nobody can go out and say, you know, I speak for the COC when I say X, Y, or Z. Um, um, so that includes item, oh, that's the item two. Uh, so we could have that in, but I don't see why it has to be a whole separate section. And then committee members shall recuse themselves from any topic where there's a perception of conflict of interest. We've already established that if there's a financial interest in the matter, they can't even serve as a committee member. Um, what, what What's he getting at here? A perception of a conflict of interest. Conflict of interest generally implies financial uh, I guess you could say, well, it was my my daughter's on the, in the fire department in that count, in, the, in that jurisdiction, and therefore, you know, my daughter's at, at the fire department in San Rafael, and therefore, I can't vote on the allocation to San Rafael. Well, I think it could also be um, um, this part of open space where you're going to prohibit having goats is mm. directly above my house, uh, and that. You know, that might have a conflict of interest if I were uh, commenting on, but, I, you know, it seems superfluous to me that. I, 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 I mean, I think that in general, our, our, our committee is going to be people, so the sort of people who, I already saw Car Carolyn Longstreth already recuse herself on some issue anyway, I, which is to do with Fern, um, and Fern made some comments. Um, I did. I once again. I did. I, I don't know that, that this is necessary in the bylaws. I, you know that we could always adopt a board policy if some if this is happening too often, um, and somebody's always there speaking up for her daughter in the San Rafael Fire Department, and you could you know make a board uh, COC committee policy that re people recuse themselves. But I don't see why it should come in. It's either irrelevant here or redundant here, um, and doesn't and it doesn't keep the door open if we can make policies that would limit it if it becomes an issue yeah i think the problem i i have with this is that it implies that we're going to have some sort of policy of voting on what's a perception of conflict of interest right mm -hmm. and we don't have that policy and i don't know you know we maybe maybe we would have a subcommittee dedicated toward you know where it's creating such a policy, but we don't have it at the moment. And so, you know, this just kind of leaves it up to the members to choose when or when not they have, a, when there might be a perception, but the perception is outside of them. And, and, and so you could easily have a situation where all of us are recusing ourselves on everything, right? Because we all have, there could be a perception of conflict of interest for everyone. Mm -hmm. it's part of Sustainable Mill Valley and the Emergency Preparedness Commission and the Sierra Club. And, you know, I'm a taxpayer and I live in Marin County and, you know, the list goes on, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, uh, you know, I, I, I won't want us to get into a situation where everyone, uh, obviously anyone can recuse themselves on something that they feel is, might be a conflict, right? But you don't want a situation where everyone is 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 being so cautious that they can't vote on anything because they're worried about a perception even if it's not real yeah and and as i say if if it starts to be a problem there's nothing we can either amend the bylaws but i, I always prefer adopting policies um the committee can adopt policies and a, a written policy that x y or z um and then it's it, it, policies can um well, actually, the way these bylaws are written, it's no more complicated to amend the bylaws than it is to amend a policy. But I just think silence, it's, this isn't prescriptive in the way we're going to itemize every piece of bad behavior that could ever come up um, and list it as prohibited. It's, it's more a sort of laying out the scope of what is and leaving the rest to um, time and policy. No, it's not like we've got budget and we're going to go spend it unwisely. It's not right. like 
are making financial decisions. It's exactly. not we're, we're doing the work plan. We're giving our opinion to our own, own organization about how they're doing and are they doing what they're supposed to do. Right. And I think that's a very good point. If we did have large uh, funds at our disposal and the decisions that we made carried with them sort of, you know, that kind of uh, effect, I think that that would be, you know, it would be more important to say that here. But since we aren't, we aren't, we have no money. Um, and one of the things, in fact, that somebody suggested was whether or not we put in, whether we're reimbursed. Um, and I think that it's somewhere else that we are not reimbursed for anything. Um, whether it's either in the JPA agreement or it's in the board bylaws. It's in somewhere that no committee will be in reimbursed for any of anything. So um, I, I was thinking about it and I was decided not to put it in um, because I think it's covered. Um, and we have no budget anyway, so we don't, you know. I, yeah. I mean, that does lead to an interesting thing, which is if someone wanted to see the conduct of our of our committee, right? Um, mm. They would come here and they would only come here, right? Unless this document directed them elsewhere. And so we may want to put something in on, on that item and we could even direct them to wherever it lives elsewhere, right? You know, something like, you know, just pull the language, put it in and then reference you know, I prefer where, silence. Right? I, I mean, if, if it governs our behavior, then it governs our behavior. If there's a question that can be answered, I, 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 you know, what it, what happens when you start drafting bylaws is you start packing in, packing in, and packing in. We look for simplicity, um, and silence is. I, I prefer it the affirmative responsibility. Once, once again, sort of, if we don't say that you can submit for reimbursement, then there's the there's assumption is that either you don't know or you can't do it. So it's the affirmative, yes, you can, or it's silent, which means. You know, you better find out about it, but it's not automatically here for you. Um, and so uh, that's, I mean, it's just a sort of drafting position, which is you don't put in every possibility of somebody's question. You just sort of leave it to this, the bare bones if possible. I, I, you know, once again, I don't have, you know, it, a, a, a real problem with it, except just as a sort of drafting style. I sort of like to keep things simple. I mean, Max, do you feel strongly? Okay. No, I, I think that's fine. I think it's just um, maybe that's not the best example, but maybe there will be others. Uh, I don't have any on the top of my head where the question is, do we include or do we not include? And I think it should be if, if a lay person came to find out what we do, maybe they're a prospective COC member and they're thinking about applying in the future, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, you know, if it was me, I would look, you know, at the bylaws and, you know, if there were some links to other standing rules, I would look at those, but I wouldn't necessarily go and look at every single document that the MWPA has. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if there's something we think is important, for I that define, then I think we should include it. And if it's not important, and I agree the reimbursements maybe isn't very important, mm -hmm. but it's not in. So, hence no reimbursement, that makes logical sense, you know, but if there ever was something, maybe, maybe we would include. Sure. You know, as we say, we're, we're our institutional practice will determine more and more clearly to what's important and what isn't. Um, and so amending the bylaws, adopting policies, all of these things become clearer um, as we, um, as we progress. And, um, but I, I might, just as I say, this sort of legal drafting position is that um, silence is is um, is the simpler way to go, unless you have some very very specific and needed information. So if just somebody has a question, like could we get reimbursements? There's nothing stopping them asking the question in a public meeting. Do you get reimbursed for the answer? You know that would be a simple way of finding out. Um, so, okay, so let's move on. Do we have any other? So where, where did we leave all of this? Okay, oh, right, thank you. <laughs> so I am going to, uh, my preference is to take out um, everything, 
Where did this item two come from? That was just less left there, but it wasn't an item. Well, it's it was actually the last statement in Article Four. Oh, okay. um, yeah, you, it wasn't you, numbered. It wasn't numbered. It was just a statement. Yeah. Um, so I think that we can keep the, you know, the conduct, but remove the second half of number one, so that it just says members shall not mis misrepresent the scope of their influence or authority in matters assigned um, or even delete in matters assigned just members shall not misrepresent the scope of their influence or authority and then just keep number two and then get rid of number three that sounds reasonable to me i don't even know what the first one means <laughs> Uh, well, it would mean that, like, if I'm talking to, say, I don't know, um, you know, a member of the board of supervisors, right? Okay. Like, oh, did you hear? I'm, you know, I'm on the citizens oversight committee of the MWPA, and they're like, oh, what do you do, right? And I'm like, oh, we, you know, we approve everything that the, you know, I don't know, just something okay. that makes it, it inflates what what it is that you know the role that we hold, right? And you could imagine someone in the future doing something of that of that nature. Um, so you know, it's Larry's point. I think is well taken. If it if it is indeed his point, which is it's a good reminder that that's something we shouldn't we shouldn't have happen. But we could also be listing every other malfeasance that somebody is capable of of, of uh, performing and list them too. I just don't see it as. I, I don't know. I, I, it seems to me that it, it's it's not an affirmative position. Roll it, it, back it, up just a little bit so oh. that we can see. Oh, the, back the document up, I guess. So, okay. So here we have, and then originally this statement was just a sentence at the end of that. Mm -hmm. So these other things are complete additions, but within Article 5, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm kind of of the Lucy school that less is better, but um, I mean, the bylaws are the rules by which we govern ourselves, yeah. right? So if there's things that, that members of the COC are worried about, uh, future COCs or the current COC doing, you know, and want to say, don't do this, right? I mean, I, I you know, if, if we're in agreement with them generally, why, why not include? I mean, I, I do understand less is, less is more or less is, less is good. Um, especially when it comes to, you know, any sort of redundancies. But, you know, if, if Larry feels that this is something to include because it could be a future issue, why, why not add, right? If, if we agree that it could be an issue. I mean, I, I could see it being an issue um, where someone could inflate their, their personal role How about if we did number two, no member of the committee shall act as the official spokesperson of the committee. That, well, that's already there. That's, that's not new. Right, but what I was gonna say is, could we add in or misrepresent the scope of their influence or authority in that one and just leave that one in members shall? I like mm -hmm. that. The problem is it says members shall not, <clears throat> which is probably why we had to leave it not number nine. Well, I mean, I, I just think that if you're misrepresenting, if you're using the word misrepresent, it's like saying don't lie, don't steal, steal don't kill. You know, it's sort of a list of things that, that you know, we, we consider to be sort of goes without saying. 
but you don't do. Uh, and why limit to misrepresent? Then you could say, don't abscond with the funds. Don't, you know, don't, uh, you know, vote yourself, you know, king and whatever, whatever it is. We, the list is, po the possibilities is endless in terms of wrong behavior. So uh, a, an example of wrong behavior would might be a reporter from the IJ comes to you and says, tell me what's going on at the MWPA. And we proceed, proceed, one of us proceeds to say, here's what's going on at the MWPA. We have by omission led them to believe that we can speak for the MWPA and we cannot. Well, that item two is, I'm proposing definitely leaving item two in because that specifically yes. prohibits that. But that's as, all, as much as I feel that we should be uh, wagging the finger because it's quite legitimate for somebody who wants to want to speak, and this is a you know it's not it's not legitimate for somebody to want to mis misrepresent. But you could easily say, oh well, what happened at the meeting was this and this and this and this, and we have by having this in here, you don't you say actually I'm not permitted to talk um, uh, without it being approved. So that's a simple answer, but uh, it, it's it's. It, it, so in that sense, I think it's something that it could be a limit um, that's legitimately in here. But all the other possibilities of bad behavior, it just seems like um, I didn't want to just start throwing everything in in the kitchen sink in terms of, of what other things that would be. And as I say, the very language in it is misrepresent. Uh, how, you know, why would you bother to say all the things you shouldn't be doing? Uh, the member of speaking or acting officially or speaking as a spokesperson, that's something that's not intrinsically wrong unless it's made wrong. Well, I think that having it, and maybe this gets to, you know, maybe we create a code of conduct, right? You know, I've been a part of the Sierra Club for a long time and and oftentimes um, issues arise, right? And, and codes of conduct are, are created, you know, for that specific committee. And people always say, well, why do we need to do this? We have such and such document somewhere hidden on the website that already does this. And it's like, no, this committee needs to talk about what are the ground rules, you know, and then people say, you know, speak, you know, speak when called upon or don't interrupt or don't speak down to people or don't, you know, you know, and then, and then you talk about all the things that, that, one shouldn't do. Um, and I think that th the benefit of having a code of conduct, whether it's in a bylaws or as some sort of separate document, is that then if someone breaks it, right, now there can be consequences. And I don't think we get to the consequences here in the bylaws, but, you know, if there was ever an issue and someone was, say, not, um, you know, not not renewed, right? For their was not reappointed for for another term, or maybe was asked to leave, right? Where would you where would you turn to to find the things that they did wrong? Well, you turn to the bylaws and you say, hey, they didn't come to committee meetings. Um, you know, they misrepresented the scope of their influence. Um, you know, and they have all these perceptions of conflicts of interest, and they didn't bother to recuse themselves. You know, when, even when asked. You know, and so you could kind of point to a document where where the where the worst things that someone could do is 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 listed, um, and maybe it's not the bylaws, but you know I think there's I think that's probably where where Larry's coming from is there's there's benefit to having it written down because um, yeah. then you can point to it if someone actually does one of the things. Um, that makes sense. I uh, and certainly I, I, and it's the sort of thing that I would think would become apparent if it's necessary. Um, that you know, people are unclear. That let's let's get this down. Let's have the you know a code of conduct. Make it quite clear. I wouldn't start out with it though because um, I don't anticipate any of the current committee that I could see being sort of a a rogue. Um, and as and if it happens unwittingly, then sure, let's develop it and let's make it absolutely crystal clear in a, in a document, a code of conduct. But I don't see the bylaws as being a place for it. I just, I feel un unhappy with starting to list too many malfeasances in here. We so, so as a practical matter, so that we can get through this document, this whole little section, authority and limitations and conduct seems to be, um, we've got 
still got questions about. Maybe we can kind of skip over that, go through the rest of it, and then come back uh, rather than, I don't know how much else we have. Because, Not much else. Um, uh, I know at least one other issue that we need to talk about. Okay, and, let's look at that. And then we can yeah. either come back to this or let the whole group. Um, well, it sounds like we're, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like the four of us are actually in agreement that the authorities and limitations section is unnecessary. Is that correct? That would be correct. Now, I don't know how you, how we want to present that in a meeting that do we just eliminate it and not talk about it or do we gray it out and say, you know, we don't think this is necessary uh, because it's sort of a given and why put it up front or, you know, well, exactly how we going through it. We, 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 call, we call out the parts that we agreed and disagreed with, with all of the commentary. And most of it was verbal. We happen to have the benefit, um, which is actually extremely helpful of Larry taking the time to write it down, right, for his comments. But we're also taking into account other comments, right? Mm -hmm. And so as we're going through, we can say, you know, there was a suggestion, um, you know, for an authority and limitation section, we found it was unnecessary, but, you know, then someone can bring up and say, hey, actually, I think it's really important. Here's why. And then, you know, there okay. could be that sounds good. some decision made there. Um, and as for the conduct, it sounds, um, it sounds like we just want to include the second, the second piece, or we don't even want to include it under conduct. I, I just include it as a sentence at the end. Um, as it was before. Yeah. Okay. Um, meetings. Uh, I find this interesting. We say the day, but we don't say the time or the length. Do we want to include include those if we're I think we, I mean, it could be a regular meeting and need to take place later. I mean, well, I, I think the, the fourth Tuesday is a sort of a good basis. It could, you know, that there's some flexibility in what time. I certainly don't think we should make a limit as to length because there could be, um, you know, could be a heavy agenda. It could be just one thing to approve and that's it. Um, I, I, this is not a, a huge problem, but has anyone besides me noticed that the fourth Tuesday is usually the last Tuesday and that's every month that's going to be when um, Fire Safe Moran does their workshops. Uh, oh, you know, that is a very good point. Their, their workshops are recorded so we can always watch them later, but I know this has popped, you know, on my calendar, these two, we of all people who should be that's uh, <laughs> thinking about attending <laughs> But I don't know if it's worth revisiting uh, when we have these meetings. Uh, I think that is worth revisiting because um, not only because all of us wouldn't be able to attend Fire Safe, but we're forcing members of the public to choose. to choose between which one. And one day we may be out of COVID, and Fire Safe Marin and us could be having, you know, in person meetings, right? Mm -hmm. And then and then people really have to choose. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know what how we would go about picking a different time. Uh, Make it a Wednesday instead of a Tuesday. Let's, so let's, let's bring are, that up. Let's bring that up and see what what time are the fire safe Marin workshops? Are they do they conflict at the six o'clock? They start oh, at six okay. o'clock. So they really do conflict. Okay. Yeah, they they really do conflict. Um, I think they are technically officially on the last Tuesday of the month, which occasionally there's a fifth Tuesday, but most of the time there, and right leading up to Christmas, they were on different days. But um, but I think we probably you're probably right. We need, should revisit that so that we're not making people choose. 
that one we're going to have to take before the whole committee to get everybody's or, or send them an email and yeah. ask everybody to tell us good or and or not good. Get Mark to send them an email. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the officers section, uh, mm -hmm. I happen to like it as written, though I think that it was a great suggestion that the vice chair move up to the chair position, which gives some continuity um, so that it really means, except for these initial folks, they get a year on that team. But I, uh, I, I, I like having the term be six months because it shares the load and um, the responsibility. And to the extent that there's any benefit, it shares the benefit. And it's not like the chair and the vice chair have a lot of duties anyway. Yeah. We've sort of limited all of, all of that. So we could... Um... Well, I think that one of the points that was made for a longer term was that then 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 six then six months was the implication that the chair would be doing the bulk of the work on the year end report and that it made sense for there to be one chair for for a whole year so that that person could could i guess you know report on what had happened under their chairpersonship right that said, if it's a team of people, right, then then it's kind of that team that's reporting on the whole year. And I think it kind of gets gets away, it, you know, kind of gets beyond that, which is good. Um, but just, you know, just to raise that as, as I think that was kind of the one of the reasons for having a whole year is, you know, the the main thing that we're going to do, you know, barring unforeseen things is we're going to be reporting on on what happened right and yes we want to be proactive and yes we want to be engaged but you know the the deliverable of our committee is a report and so the idea was well wouldn't it be great if if a chair you know did that report um on on their chairpersonship but instead it would be the team doing it uh, and just just to elaborate on that because um uh I don't know that, um, first of all, the chairman would have any particular role beyond any individual member in producing that report. I mean, I'm envisioning everybody having input in that report. Um, so yeah. just, I'm, just I'm just trying to think, of course, none of us really lived through this, so that we don't quite know all what that's involved, but that there wouldn't be any particular responsibility for the, of the chair for that um, beyond any individual committee member's responsibility for that. Um, I'm just trying to see, yeah. I mean, because in this, the role of them, we've just really got preside over meetings, um, ensure the proper recording and publications of the minutes, um, maintain and organize committee documents and reports. So maybe it's the committee, maintain and organize committee documents and reports, but that's not really the drafting and the, that's more everybody's role, I think. Well, um, the way we do it at, at, at the EPC, at the Mill Valley Emergency Preparedness Commission, mm -hmm. is we give a report every year uh, to the city council, right? So in this case, it would be the MWPA. So, um, you know, normally be in person, now it's in Zoom. So at some point between December and February, each of the commissions comes before the city council and gives a report, and they're all slightly different in how they present them but it's always the chair that's doing the presentation normally with their staff liaison. So in the case of us, it's, uh, you know, Deputy Fire Chief Tom Welch and, and our chair. Um, and, and, you know, yes, the chair, everyone's involved in giving, you know, insight into what should be in the report, but, you know, usually it's the chair who does the bulk of the work with the staff liaison putting it together because that's the person who's gonna give give the report. And that was the person who was involved probably in every item that happened that year, right? Um, versus, you know, 
a random person might have only been involved in one or two things. Um, that may be different with the COC, but you know, that's kind of how 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 most of the commissions in my mind have have, have operated at least in Mill Valley. Uh, one thing I did notice here was it says during any calendar year, but they can be reelected to consecutive terms. Do we mean non-consecutive? We don't um, mean that someone could be chair and then reelected as chair six months later. No, I think what we wanted was that if um, somebody serves for six months, but they're doing such a fabulous job and nobody else feels, feels like doing it, we could say, we said at that time, that's what we were discussing at the time was that they, they could say, you know, go ahead and serve another six months. But this is before I think Larry made his point about being uh, succeeded by the vice chair. And I think, I think it's a good one. So that if we leave it as only six months, then the whole implication is the whole year is taken care of when the vice uh, chair takes over. And essentially what that means is in the end, um, we, the election is only ever for this, the vice chair, because once the vice chair becomes chair, it's, you're, we're really only ever picking the vice chairs, uh, and that I mean that that works for me. Um, that, so that sounds great. I think we should maybe take out the elected to a consecutive terms language because that would suggest that um, that it, they aren't overtaking. How about if I draft something to allow for the vice chair to come in, take out that? Uh, I mean, and submit it all to you um, to yeah. see how, if you like the language. Yeah, you're right that once it once you have the vice chair coming in, then you don't want to have the consecutive terms because mm -hmm. and then you'd sort of get into, oh, well, did we really like this person enough to block that person out? Uh, I just think it's cleaner to to do it that way. Uh, but to go back to your point, Matt, about um, making the report. Um, I think that there is that this is the key difference with the um, COC as opposed to other commissions is that we actually write a report. All of us write a report and it's produced as the COC's report. I don't even know that whoever presents it to any of the would it be presenting it to the board or releasing it to the public. Um, that person would be designated as the spokesperson, not necessarily the chair. Um, this yeah. is, is it, it's more the grand jury model than it is a commission model, which sort of had influenced the way I think. We're about. getting one thing that's different from the grand jury, right? Yeah. Which is the Brown Act. So yeah. all of us cannot gather and write a report together. And there's also a lot of people. Oh. And we can if we have a special meeting, right? Mm -hmm. And we solicit public input. But then it's a public meeting where we're talking, I mean, I guess all of our subcommittees now are recorded anyway. So, um, right, I, I, I guess that's uh, that's implied. But, you know, just remember that we're not working on a Google Doc and emailing back and forth in between meetings. So it's still yeah. going to be a subcommittee. And I think that what Larry Minikis was suggesting was that, you know, one of the responsibilities of the chair should be or is maybe expected to be to be a key member of that's putting together that report. Um, mm -hmm. We can okay. suggest that not be the case, but I think that's that that was always my assumption, and I think that was his assumption, and I imagine others as well would kind of have assumed that one of the things that the chair is doing is being active in 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 producing that document. Hmm. You know, that's a very good point. I hadn't thought about the Brown Act. Um, it it would seem to me like that producing that document is sort of the committee as a whole. Uh, I can't imagine not wanting to be a part of producing that report. Um, and since we have already decided that everything's going to be recorded, um, you know, the Brown Act is, I mean, it, it's, it's going to be sausage made in public, uh, no matter what. Uh, I hadn't really thought of 
the committee chair necessarily being the person to present it. I think the person who presents the best gets to present. Uh, I don't know how one would determine that, but um, you know, it might be the chair, it might not. And how, so Max, you had said that the uh, entire COC couldn't be together writing the report because no, of the Brown Act? We could, we, we could in, a, in, a, in a regularly scheduled meeting or in a special meeting. Um, what we could not do is, you know, have a Google Doc or emails in between meetings where we're all discussing, right? Got it. So we could do it how we're doing it right now, where there's a subcommittee that's recording meetings and, and working in between meetings, you know, online and people uh, not on the subcommittee are sending in recommendations like, like we have this great recommendation from, from Larry, right? Or we could all do it in together but if we're all doing it together, we can't, you know, the, the full committee can't be working in between the meetings. It just, it just, you know, hampers it a little bit. Um, and for good reason, right? It makes it so that we have to do things in public, but it just makes it a little more, more cumbersome. And it may end up, you know, meeting that, meaning that, you know, that one month a year, we have to meet, you know, twice in a month for three hours each time, because we're, going over a document in depth and we have nothing else on the schedule. You know, we're not putting, you know, updates from the other committees or anything else, right? That's our six hours of writing the report together. Um, you know, but uh, yeah, or, or maybe there's a subcommittee that's coming with recommendations kind of like how we are with this process. Yeah. I've actually thought this has worked quite well. Um, I'm thinking about this now, having just been through the civil grand jury process, uh, it would have been delightful had we been able to write a report in six, or even edit a report in six hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or six days. <laughs> or six months. Or we're lucky. Yeah, we had some that went longer than six months. Uh, I can't, I cannot picture how this is going to work. I think that's going to take some real Mm -hmm. ah. that's hadn't thought about it i think so, I, I think we'll have to find the committee now before we even hmm. sorry lucy you were saying no i i think that there's so much that i personally haven't experienced that maybe as a group a few of you have or some have a little bit but not but this is a whole endeavor that none of us have quite this way ever tried before so we're going to have a big learning curve. Um, we might need to change arrangements and things as who presents or how we handle. But uh, but I, I I think that only time will tell. We'll we'll learn and we can make adjustments as as we discover. But leaving it leaving it simple is the way I would I'm inclined to go. So um, the vice chair taking over from the chair, I think makes sense just in terms of um, sort of organization. This whole issue about presenting uh, the report is, is, is something else and we can be silent on that. And as we discover how and when and the best way to work, we can adapt or just simply pick somebody at the time who's most comfortable with or on, on, on top of everything to be the presenter and just work, work, work on it that way. Okay. So, uh, so I think we what we decided is we like vice chair moving up to chair and we take out the language about uh, consecutive terms. And I'll write some language in and oh, I can't send it to you all. Hmm. Okay. I'll just write some language in and we'll present so it with the can next. send it to us. You can send I it can. to us. We're a subcommittee. Oh, all right. Okay. Yes, then we're, I will send it to you. Yeah, we're, we're less than five people. All right. We just agreed that if we if we're going to have an actual meeting, that we uh, record it so that people in the future can can watch. If they if sending they, out a draft with this concept in it yeah. doesn't is fine. Okay. 
can send it to us, but what we can't do is send it to Larry. Right. His further thought, right? We can't add Larry to our subcommittee or anyone else for that matter to our subcommittee, but we can take his great suggestions that came through staff. Does that mean all subcommittees are automatically limited to four people? Yeah. yeah. Always. I've just. Yeah. Huh. Because we're nine, right? So, like any yeah. city council yeah. in Marin or the Board of Supervisors are all five. So, their subcommittees are always two. Ah. So, yeah. So, four, in fact, is a big committee, a big subcommittee. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's move on to conduct of business. Well, do we want to do the subcommittee? Oh, well, I was going to put the language in that we okay. talked about and uh, send it out to you if you guys want to make any changes, but I was going to draft that. Great. Um, I have no problem with um, anything that he said here except the Roberts Rules of Order. But the rest of it, I think, is fine. Um, we can talk about the Roberts Rules of Order. Do we, as, is that a requirement of committees that you have, Roberts or whomever, rules of order? It's generally advisable that committees operate on a set of some kind of rules of orders, um, but it doesn't have to be Roberts. And once again, I always like to be silent. Um, and then if the, they choose that one or they choose an alternative one or... For a while, because we're not a normal committee, we sort of try things on a kind of ad hoc basis and then say, look, this is this is ridiculous. Everybody's talking all over everybody else and we haven't got proper motions and we haven't got this and that. Pick a pick a rule of order and, and adopt it as a policy. Um, it just, once again, it, it's tying us to the way government operates in quite the way they operate. And we aren't quite, we're certainly a public committee, but we're not a government committee as such. So, uh, but you know, uh, once again, I don't have deep, deep, deep feelings about this. But if uh, if you guys do, then let's uh, let's leave it in. I'll let people who have strong opinions about it make a decision on this one. I mean, whatever way people, uh, you know, on our committee want to conduct themselves is, I'm, I'm happy to go along with. Um, it, it sounds like Lucy, you're not objecting to Robert's rules of order. You're objecting to mentioning which which rules. Is that I, I am, and it's also because I think we don't yet know how we operate. If we, we have a kind of informal um, conversational style of meeting as a COC, that might work for us. Um, uh, well, obviously, we were, we're definitely within the constraints of the Brown Act, but that's just publicizing what. But if our conversations are sort of a little bit more freewheeling, don't necessarily have to be, you know. When we take an action, probably, yes, there has to be a motion and it has to be seconded and then it, there's a vote taken. But beyond that, you know, we could we could leave it pretty open. And if we're discovering that we, you know, it's simply not functional and that we need more precise um, controls we can adopt any number of choices. Um, Robert's not being might be well being the appropriate one. I just once again my my instincts about bylaws is leave them out unless um, unless there's a very compelling reason to put it in. Um, I'm I'm uh, ignorant as to whether uh, the other committees uh, of the MWPA. Mention it or not? I can't, some do and some because don't. I, 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 look. I think it was a point we should you know, take, which is that there was a suggestion for continuity across across the MWPA. So I'd hate for us to be the only committee. And yes, we are a little bit different. We're an oversight committee, not a not a committee committee, right? But you know, as as far as conducting our meetings, we want people who are attending all of the meetings to have a sense of, oh, they're operating in a similar, in a similar way, right? Didn't, Just for continuity's sake. Didn't, for example, the operations committee? Did they, I think they did. Different set of rules, not Roberts. Oh, really? They, uh, it was something else. I, mean, I don't have my file folder with me, but. Um, um, let's have a quick look. Uh, well, I'll look it up. I'll look it up and 
Rosenberg's rules of order. Well, which one? Rosenberg's? The MWPA bylaws have a statement. This is from uh, in his comments to us. Yeah. Rosenberg's rules of order shall govern the conduct of committee meetings. And but this is the board. That's the board bylaws. Um, that's. Right. I, I I would think that somebody or other might want to do a study, and look at which one might be better. I. That's why I'm in the end would rather not put it in the bylaws and just have. If this is something we decide that we need, somebody might say, "Well, I think Roberts is best," and somebody else might say Rosenberg's, um, or we might just decide that we don't need them. I I once again. Oh, but can I, can I just bring up something that I, that does matter? Uh, I think make uh, something is something that I I think is different, and I don't necessarily agree with. Um, at every member meeting of the committee, the committee members may set a tentative agenda for the following meeting. I was thinking that when we were had discussed this, that this this was the way we set the agenda for the next meeting. It's not just it's up to us if we feel like it, because if none of us feel like it and it's only tentative, um, then it leaves the meeting without an agenda, right? Um, yeah. So... Well, in- <laughs> the... I, th- I think we had this discussion last time and I said normally the chair and sometimes the chair vice chair slash staff create the agenda and then at the end of the meeting it's recommendations to the chair to put things on the agenda and if the chair says no I refuse then you can have a vote right which in our case would need five people if everyone's present um <clears throat> I just so I, what do you think? Do you think his language is sort of, is, I, I t- talk to me, tell me what you think about it. I'm un, unclear. I, I think, I think tentative makes sense um, because it is the tentative meeting. If, if something comes up between meetings, um, you, you, you'd want to be able to add something, right? I thought when we discussed it, we said that if something came up between meetings, we would, um, if well, I guess it has to be, if it's before the 72 hours, it can be added in, but otherwise we'd have to have a special meeting if something came up that was super important that couldn't wait Mm -hmm. till the following meeting. And I thought we were saying we don't want the chairperson to set the agenda. Yeah. That we as a committee want to speak up at our meeting and say, here's what we want on the next agenda. And well, everybody- we didn't do that at the last meeting. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Like we all we all gave suggestions at the last meeting, but we didn't set the agenda. Right. We didn't we didn't sit down and create an agenda. We just offered suggestions for things we want on future agendas, in the plural, right? Oh, okay. So that's so. What we said was, I'd like the following item to be discussed at the next meeting. And you're right. That's not exactly setting a full agenda. That's just raising an item to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so then, my my idea is that probably what's going to happen is Mark's going to go and create an agenda, and mm-hmm. he's going to send it to the two Larrys. And he's going to say, hey, chair and vice chair, what do you think of this agenda? And then the two Larrys are going to say, actually, you know, I think that item, you know, let's do that in February. And, oh, here's something else I thought of in the last month. And then Mark's going to say, oh, I got it. I got an email from so-and-so on the COC suggesting we discuss this. And so I think they are going to set the agenda, but they're going to take into account all the things that we proposed at the last at the last meeting. I just think that's functionally how it's going to work. I, I, Unless I, we want to create an actual agenda at, at each meeting, which we could which we could do. I'm thinking that that's what we would or should do. Uh, and you're right, we didn't do it at the last meeting. Um, we just raised items, um, and that. The way we talked about it before was that the agenda would be set at the previous meeting, barring um, some new item that needed to be addressed, which in which case it would be a special meeting. And if it can can wait, then it could be suggested at the next meeting that it be 
discussed at the following meeting. Um, so I think I, th I think that's the, the was our intention that in fact the, the chair and the vice chair not be the agenda setters. I think that was our the intent too because of not necessarily wanting um, it's almost in the the other direction not wanting to have items that we don't think are important uh, or appropriate timing to be on the agenda. And maybe there's another way to take care of that um, when at the beginning of a meeting, uh, and I'm not entirely sure of Robert's Rules of Order or whoever, but oftentimes they shift the timing of uh, you know, let's discuss item four after item six. Uh, uh, can you also say, I would like to suggest that we remove item so-and-so from the agenda. I don't know whether that's possible or not. It is, and they've done that. Good. You know, pick it out. We'll talk about it some other time. Yeah, so so five people on the committee. <coughs> Excuse me. Five people on the committee could say we don't want to talk about that today. <coughs> I'm not sure where that leaves us with this though. Well, I think we can have a question mark and well, I guess we can't. Well, we're having a special meeting to discuss this as a whole group, right? So we could bring this as something for the group to discuss. I mean, it's okay for us to say that we're in disagreement too, the four of us, right? And I have a feeling there'll be disagreement in the wider COC on this. Um, it, it may be, you know, it may even be good to hear, um, you know, Mark's idea on this as well, because he's the one who's actually gonna write it um on what would be helpful uh, i don't have any strong opinions i think i do think that it would be good though to have the ability if something did come up or got forgotten in a previous meeting to be added without having to have a special meeting because if we had to then find you know another time to do another meeting right that could be you know simply because we couldn't add it you know, that would, that would be a shame, right? But we don't want that to be a regular thing where there's lots of last minute things, but it's, it's the exception, you know, to the rule. So whatever allows that to happen, I think is fine. Um, one thing I did see is it says at every meeting of the committee, you know, we might want to say at every regular meeting, because mm -hmm. um, I don't know that at the special meetings, we're necessarily creating agendas for the, for the people meeting. Um, but uh, I'm, you know, I, I could go either way, you know, there's kind of two questions here, the question of may or the question and the question of tentative, right? Because you could say shall set a tentative and you could say may set an agenda, right? <laughs> or you could say may set a tentative agenda. So there's kind of those two, two questions. So I, I would say, let's bring it to the group. Um, okay. Um... But I think that this is this is one of the it goes hand in hand with the um, definition of the sh of the chair and vice chair's roles um, that we've made this sort of policy decision to keep them in a limited way, um, and I think that this is a very significant power that uh, any chairman could wield. That. Um, but there, as you say, there are these practical issues. Um, I, I think we very much want to keep the agenda setting as a committee issue. Um, but you know, we can talk about it. See, another thing we might we might want to do also is set out a calendar for a whole year, right? That happens every year, regardless of who's chair, right? So I don't know. Maybe in you know, if we decide there's a subcommittee needed for 
um, the annual report, right? Maybe in September, the subcommittee is created. And then in October and November, you know, the subcommittee is reporting out, you know, and, and that's, you know, and the focus is on the report. And then it's not really up to the COC or the chair or anyone else, right? It's like, that's the, that was the agenda that was set back in, you know, in January, right? So there might be, you know, every, you know, every January and, sorry, not even January, every December and June, we're going to elect a new chair and vice chair, right? So that's on the agenda every December and June, regardless of who's chair. Um, so, you know, that's another way to, to kind of influence the agenda too. You know, at the end of the day, we're an oversight committee. So there's not, there's not a lot of new agenda items, I, I don't imagine. <laughs> Okay. Well, I think that covers all the, uh, oh, wait, no, yes, it does. Yeah, I'm just seeing here. Okay, so what I propose is writing another draft, which is not going to leave Larry's comments in. It's going to be a whole new draft. We can, when presenting it, um, have Larry's version at hand, or the presenter could say, this was, a, this was an item that we discussed. It slightly differed from what Larry was suggesting um, for the following reasons we decided to do it this way. Um, but it, I always prefer it to sort of a clean draft to sort of work forward from, um, and we certainly can raise the issues that came from the last one, but I it just cleaner to look at an, a new document. That sounds good. Do we want to divide and conquer like we did at the last meeting and divide up the the document uh, to oh to to present uh, i'm i'm okay uh, anyway you want to do it i didn't have a i thought that worked well um you know because then we got to actually kind of steer the conversation right the problem if we don't then it's going to be steered you know by whoever whoever has a strong opinion about it right before we've been able to present Right, and and we obviously want to hear people who have strong opinions. This is for the whole COC, not just for us. Mm -hmm. But I think it's it's good if we can first kind of lay out our thinking on it, so that we're not you know then responding to someone who hasn't been able to hear hear our you know conversation about the item. So, I mean, Lucy, do you want to take purpose since that's kind of what you did? You know, maybe take articles one through. Well, the one that I feel most strongly about is the article responsibilities one. Um, uh, that's the thing four. about the conduct, okay. yeah. But, you know, actually, if somebody else wants to take that, that's fine. I, I'm happy, whatever whatever works. Rebecca, what do you feel strong most strongly about? Uh... I, I'm testing my feeling strongly part. I don't think I feel strongly <laughs> about any of it. I, I can, meaning on any of the sections that we made changes, I didn't care one way or the other. Okay. Other than uh, no, I really don't, I really don't care. I'm happy to take any section. Great. Uh, Pat, any strong opinions? Um, I don't have any strong feelings uh, uh, one way or the other. Um, I think it would behoove us to each have um, this draft with Larry's suggestions in hand so we can mention what we you know, the kind of conversation we had and why we left it as it is or changed it. But uh, um, I mean, was, I'm completely comfortable with what I did before, but I don't even know where those are. Um, um, you you did uh, five, uh, six officers and I guess it was a part of three with the three year terms. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm open to any way you want to divide it up. I'm open. And Lucy, are you okay with leaving 
this version of the document copying and starting from this document to make your next version so we can have this version but that we should have this version at hand when we're presenting the next version Perfect. Um, and wherever larry had put it raised a question or oh, if we remember that another member of the committee had had an issue on that topic we can say oh and in reference we discussed you know larry minicky's concept about this and but in but we're presenting off a of, off a clean document, not showing an endless markup. I know one thing we have not discussed that yeah. suddenly popped into my head that I think we probably ought to very briefly was um, uh, the suggestion that we have alternates. Oh right. Um, right. And and by the way, I I wrote down. I've co we've covered everything else. I, I, I get Kingston's point with alternates, but I think in this case, it would be somewhat awkward. Um, you know, it's, it's understandable with him and with him and cost that it's, you know, sort of almost like a succession that, but if we ha if each of us had an alternate that would be 18 people up on the grid each time we had a meeting with half of them being silent um and i guess what i didn't like about the idea of alternates was that that alternate would automatically become the member at some future time which gives a confusion of if we are saying people can uh, serve multiple terms. So I have an alternate and I up and decide to serve two full terms. So the alternate six years from now comes on. Uh, I don't know, I just, it seemed to me way too complicated for um, this group. And I was trying to think of what TAMS COC looked like, but I have a feeling TAMs are much more directed. Uh, like how do you choose the other alternate from San Rafael or from uh, Southern Marin or from Novato? Uh, I, I don't know, it just, it, it seemed functionally difficult with this group. But does some anybody the, else have any thoughts? Some of the one, I don't remember who's bylaws because I I read them all and then just made bulk notes so I don't know who said what however some of them or at least one had alternates that were for anybody so they just had like three alternates and then if somebody left the committee one of the alternates took their place like we did with the um, civil grand jury However, that doesn't work so well when you yeah. are specifically representing cost or well, San Rafael if or, you did. or San Rafael. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to have assigned alternates who attend meetings, we'd have no choice but then to have nine alternates. And I think that's... And that person would only rep replace the individual seat that they're leaving from. I, it just seems that anyone who's that interested in sort of being a successor would probably be sitting in on the meetings anyway. I don't see somebody wanting volunteering for this if they're just sort of, I've never heard of this COC, now I want a seat on it. Uh, so. I mean, I think if we were to have alternates, we would have to go back to the original applications and see who else fell into our categories and select an alternate from that. And then I just foresee a circumstance where you select an alternate and three or six years down the road, you know, you don't think that person has the skills that are, are needed at the time and you get in an awkward situation of, you know, no, we want somebody else. I don't know, it just, it. I couldn't think through how this would work easily with this group. I'm not even sure we got through the discussion of 
picking the next person, which is might be the same as as we're talking about with having an alternate. I, I'm not even sure if when it's time for Larry 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 Minikis is representing um, ESP. ESP. But now well, the it's, environmental community at large. Yeah. Well, so so yes, so he's representing, and the and at the moment it sort of looks like that's ESP and Fern. Well, it's all the organizations that belong to ESP and Fern. It's not yeah. ESP and Fern, but it's yeah. it's constant. You know, it's all yeah. of those. All of those. Yeah, and there's something like more than fifty organizations yeah. in uh, ESP. And so, how are they going to pick? That's their problem. But, <laughs> but they are not, right? It's, it's, it's us who are making us the Us are going to pick. Hmm. Right, where, where is it? Um, yeah, we've said we'd select. We'd, we'd um, here, no. It's terms, in the terms section, I think. So back up. And so then we'd have to do that for the alternate as well. Yeah. Uh, I, I just don't see that. If we're going to be doing the selection, um, we would be have, have any reason to have an alternate sitting there. No, I I, I agree. I think it's um, I mean the the benefit of an alternate would be if you know then we you know if if, if I can go to the operations committee, then I could send my alternate in my place, and if it's a non-voting but voice, you know they could actually be in the meeting, right? Um, you know, and I could get their notes, but honestly, I think in, in the zoom world that we're in, right. It's like, we can all watch easily. We can all, you know, pop in and out of me, you know, partial meetings, you know, watch the rest later. You know, there's a lot more nimbleness than, you know, oh my gosh, I have to get in my car and drive across the County and rush hour to, you know, attend or else I'm not going to have another chance. Right. So, I mean, I think Pat, you made a good case for not having alternates. Um, I was thinking alternates made made some some sense in terms of I think it's good to be more inclusive and welcoming. And as a COC, right, that's what we're all about: is transparency and participation. But you know, at the same time, it's like why you know you're also kind of setting up this this succession planning mm -hmm. or something that's like for a few years down the road like it seems you know and at the end of the day we are you know an oversight committee we're not you know i i don't think the mwpa even has alternates maybe, maybe there's alternates to i think they do have alternates yeah. but but uh but that's a little bit different because they're alternate yeah. we vote for them and we have no voting power so um, right. We're voting on who's chair, you know, <laughs> and the report and the audit and, you know, yeah. Okay. So no alternates. Well, and that, I guess one of us can bring up and I'm happy to do it uh, in the conversation with, that we have at the special meeting that we discussed it, but we thought that it was uh, there were more negative things to be said than positive. Um, and if anybody wants to discuss it further, they can. Uh, but again, it's, you can see how it would work with cost, but not with anybody else. It would be more cumbersome. And uh, cost is, is, is only straightforward because there's only cost. Yeah. Right. I mean, there, you know, in the past, there <laughs> were two Marin United taxpayer associations right mm -hmm. and they didn't get along right yeah. what and was then, the other one uh, oh. they were both called muda i believe oh. uh, united taxpayers association and they <laughs> you know, and then they went away and then there you know uh, there is you know cspp which still exists you know which is focused specifically on pensions and now there's costs but you know you could have you know 25 you know there's a million environmental groups you could have a million taxpayer groups right um you know yeah. so it's straightforward only because there's only cost. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think um, it it may it makes sense. I think for us to take different sections. So why don't uh, I I don't mind taking um, 
uh, articles uh, one, two, and three. You know, one is just laying out what we are. Um, and then uh, Lucy, why don't you take um, th four, but then also cover these other two sections here that we're not including, right? To explain why, why that is that we're not including them. Um, and then uh, let's see here. Um, Rebecca, why don't you take then five, six, and seven? And then Pat, you can take the rest plus why we're not doing alternates. Okay. And the reality is, is Lucy's section and Pat's section are kind of the only two that are going to be, and it may be a little on the purpose, that are going to be controversial, right? <coughs> So tell me which ones I'm taking. So I write it down. Um, I had suggested yeah. five, six, and seven. No, that's no. me. Oh, that's Rebecca. I had suggested uh, eight, nine, and 10. No, sorry. Yeah. Oh, there is no 10. No. <laughs> There's eight, no 10 nine, in the document. Eight, eight, nine, and alternates. Oh. Did it no, there's an 11. <laughs> it should be. <laughs> 9 and 11 yeah. is what you're taking. Let's catch that. <laughs> okay. And so it, uh, hopefully that will become 8, 9, and 10. And yes. Yes. <laughs> um, well, well, I'm, I'm glad we... Uh... <laughs> just, and ju uh, just to go back quickly to Article 2 Purpose, I can't remember. Um, I, I made a note and now I can't read it. Are we leaving in uh, Larry's language, or, uh, or and we are we going to put it in as a? I I know we discussed this, and I'm so sorry. Um, we, we, we're going to put it in, but saying including the following and leave his language in, or are we not putting it in? Which which section? Uh, article two, purpose. Ah, we're saying the last sentence here that starts. Yes, goes in first. Oversee. That's going to be the first sentence. Yeah. And the and the not not exactly. It's going to be you know the purpose of this committee. Right. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got that. Uh, then and, what then, about... and then we're including his first sentence. Okay. But not the second one. Okay. All right. So. And not our old one that's crossed out. Right. And so, uh, Lucy is doing one, two, and three. No, I'm doing. Max uh, uh, is doing one, two, and three. Lucy is doing four, and then what would have been five and six if they were. Well, it's all one section, but that's fine. It's got a lot in it. Got it. Oh, I see. They would they have really been. Well, he, he yeah, it, it doesn't because matter. Because they're capital, I, yeah, I yeah. assume would be. Okay, do you want to take another one, Lucy? I know, that's fine. If you do, you can take three from me. There's only that one thing. <laughs> that's fine. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Good. So, so, sorry. You're doing all the work. Yeah, it's it's not going to take long. I'll get I'll try and get um, something a revised uh, version out to you probably by Tuesday, if not before. And our next meeting is the thirteenth with the whole committee. Yeah, and that's a special meeting. Yeah, and so the so for a special meeting, does that mean we still need to have? Documents to mark to release. Yeah, seventy-four hours ahead. So what I propose is I'll send out a draft. Um, we could have a if any of you we could email each other, right? So if any of you have any comments, um, we could just do it by email. If it's starting to be too complicated, we could set a quick a quick meeting. But we could probably handle any issues just uh, via email. I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. Because we've sort of discussed all the underlying, what's the word I want? Framework. Mm -hmm. So we we probably are comfortable with what issues might come up. Okay. 
All right. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you, team. Thanks, yeah. everyone. It's a pleasure. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. All right. I'm going to click end and hopefully uh, they'll all disappear it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, Max. <laughs> All right. Well, it's 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 not my Zoom, so it's it's getting recorded on Mark's, I think. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Oh, Good maybe luck. I'll I'll say stop recording.